Hi, Bill. Hi, Lance. Okay, so um, uh, what's new? <laughs> Anything changed last time I, I spoke to you? No, life just goes on as normal. That's why oh, I'm home and you're home. Okay, indeed. Um, okay, so first off, I want to tell our viewers, whatever Lance and I will discuss, we are quite aware and quite sympathetic that we are talking about first world problems. There are people in America and elsewhere that have it far worse than we do, and medical workers, grocery store clerks, they are doing God's work and God bless them. Okay, so Lance, seriously, how has your life changed with the pandemic? Well, uh, I mean, personally, uh, both my girls are back home. Molly was a senior at University of Chicago. She's got tossed out of her dorm, so she's living with us. My other daughter works at home. Um, she was told to work at home uh, in Atlanta, so she moved in with us. So she's uh, working at home from here. It's kind of funny because uh, she's on East Coast time, even though the rest of us are in Chicago time. She's here. <laughs> hey, those millennials always coming back to the parents' basement. Crap, you know. That, 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 <laughs> so, um, and of course, you know, I, I think it's been, uh, I worked out March 19th, I've been here, um, basically at home, you know, with um, some, you know, short trips to supermarkets, and they've even trying to cut back on that now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, I had, we had our first uh, supermarket trip with masks on. Uh, it was okay. It was just weird. It was, just seems so weird, though. Although we were not, we were not alone. <laughs> Most people had masks on. So um, it's getting to be the new normal, I suppose. Hey, uh, let me actually talk about some positive. I know this is weird. Let me talk about, at least for me anyway, some positive aspects, maybe for others as well. I sure. now can do Skype. I can now I can now can do Zoom. Lance, what are we on, on now, actually? We're on Google Meets. It's, Good. Uh, I will Google it's what, Meet. you know, we're a Google app place at Illinois Tech, so that's what we're doing. Oh, okay, that's fine. But Lance, as you know, I'm somewhat of a Luddite in general, but I'm getting sort of out of that now. I'm, I'm beginning to join the 21st century finally, so that's good. Um, flip classroom. I had recordings of my classes, both good and bad. I recorded my classes the last week I was able to be at school. I put them on the web, and the students are supposed to, and they're doing this, watch the recording, and then we meet, and we talk about it. That wasn't really working because in, a, in an actual classroom, I could talk about it. I can go to the audience. I can have them go in small groups. You can do some of these things on Zoom, not as well. So what now I'm doing now is I've now made slides. So I'm essentially doing, they see the recorded lecture, then they see a different lecture on slides and me just doing it. So the good news is I've always meant to do slides on some things and now it's getting done. So that's kind of good, but it's a lot of work. And of course, it's all seat of the pants and last minute. Okay. Um, oh, at your school, uh, are, you giving, are you giving students grades pass fail or is it A, B, C, D or what? Yeah, this was a big debate, but we ended up going with uh, pass fail for undergraduates. Um, with very limited opportunity for opting out. Okay, uh, we have pass fail, and anybody who wants to can opt out, which I think is a terrible idea. Um, and also, we have a, a trickier issue though is that um, if it, in, in our school you need to get a, a if you get a D in say comp discrete math, a D is not a passing grade for the major, but it is a passing grade for uh, for Maryland. So. A, B, C, and D, there are students who are getting Ds in discrete math who will be able to go on in the major. We've sort of waived that requirement now. That's a hard, I, I don't know what to do about that one. So that, that I'm more sympathetic on. Anyway, I'm just, I'm just saying, to be fair, I have sympathy for any school doing anything because these are hard times. Okay. I, I agree. It's, um, you know, I think we have to be understanding of the students. There's a lot of students in different circumstances. I mean, some students are in their nice homes with great internet connections and great computers, and other ones may not be as in good good situation or might be in a far flung time zone. Mm -hmm. So, you know, what we can do, and if we have to err on being a little bit easier on the students, I think that's probably fine. Oh, I would agree that certainly. Um, one thing, the thing has gone so quickly this crisis, and that about a month, about three weeks ago, I was pondering whether I'd go to Atlanta for the Gathering for Gardeners conference. I can't imagine that now. Just last week, I was wondering, will I run my REU program? Actually, it will run virtually, but I can't imagine having them come to campus now. In fact, by the way, other REU programs have been in contact where they're still battling with this. Can they do virtual? Uh, some can't really do virtual. Can they cancel, et cetera? So I'm, I'm just saying there are normal life things being disrupted big time. Conferences, let's talk about conferences. Yeah, I mean, it's been, um... You know, we, I think a, you know summer conference season's coming up. So, <laughs> or so you know, we <laughs> as 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 our listeners know, hopefully that you know most of the CS, and I say most, but a large chunk of CS conferences happen in the summer when people can travel. 
Um, so we're about to hit uh, the time when, you know, they start around June. So conferences are starting to have to make the decisions now as to whether or not to actually have them, uh, you know, a physical meeting, a virtual no, meeting. No, that is not a no they're not, they are not having physical meetings. I cannot imagine stock or complexity or iCal. Um, this, Lance, do you honestly think there's any chance that any of these will actually run uh, physically? I think it's highly unlikely. Uh, yeah. I don't think they've called it yet. Um, okay. Although, you know, if you go to the stock homepage and it smartly says, don't book any airline tickets until you make a final decision, which we'll do yeah. by the end of April. Um, yeah, the question is how well you can do a virtual conference. Uh, I mean, I think you can have people give talks over Zoom or Google Meet or whatever uh, software we can set up. But, um, uh, you know, trying to replicate the rest of the conference experience, replicate uh, you know, people just talking to each other in the hallways or having a reception or, or, um, you know, going out to dinner together. I mean, these kinds of things that, that we, I feel are very important parts of a conference, you know, are going to be a little bit harder to rec, you know, we, what, we can do the virtual talks. I don't think that's going to be too much of a challenge, but to replicate it. Now it's interesting. I uh, tweeted out a link for the um, VR conference. So the VR conference did a virtual VR conference. <laughs> And they gave some, it was kind of weird. I mean, the, the page suggested how they did it, but they didn't really talk about how well it worked. Um, so I'm <laughs> curious if, you know, in this VR world, they were actually able to replicate the uh, hallway discussions. Oh, okay. That, 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 so you're saying they were, they, were, they were able to do that? Well, they able to provide it. I don't know how well it actually worked. Did people actually congregate in the hallways? <laughs> um, I mean, there's an issue. If there's a conference, if you're not physically there, it's too easy to go switch off and do something else. It also, it's um, I've had the problem of you know, that there have been conferences that had talks taped online, great talks, and I've always meant to go watch them, but if you're not really there, it's hard to get around to watching them. Yeah, it's hard to find the time. Yeah. Also, if you're going to a conference in Europe or Asia, oh, and you're doing yeah. it virtually, obviously, the time zone's coming. I mean, you're not going to put yourself in, like, there's a big game theory con conference in a Budapest this summer. Oh, Are you going to put yourself in Budapest time? Um, if you're trying to connect with people there. So that could be a little tricky. Uh, also, one thing is that I keep on thinking, well, at least I have more time to do stuff. No, no, I am actually busier than ever. You told me that as a dean, you have more meetings than ever. Is that right, still? Yeah, maybe it's just because it's easier to make virtual meetings that, um, you know, even today I had, uh, honestly, two meetings scheduled. And this is one of them. Okay. <laughs> and uh, but I've already had like two other ones, and then someone, you know, one of one of the department chairs says, "You know, me, I'm going to chat with you after we're done with this." Mm -hmm. <laughs> so um, yeah, no, it's uh, it's just too easy to create a meeting when you're a virtual meeting. You don't have to actually physically walk anywhere. You just click a a link, and they've yep. made it very easy to send links to create these meetings. So yeah, I see me having you know a typical day, four or five meetings, and sometimes eight or nine. Uh, you know, it's hard to actually find time to do work, which is really responding to lots of emails mm -hmm. and trying to catch up. And do you know what started happening today is that people are coming back with, oh, now that things have calmed down a little, we can get <laughs> back to all the things we've been putting off. So uh, I got I about three or four of those today. So. Um, yeah, no, so life, life is still actually quite busy, even though, uh, you know, we're working out of home. Okay, now here's a thought for you. We have Zoom and Skype and other things, and a lot of people, some people don't have these things, but we have them at least. I'm wondering, had this happened 20 years ago, it might have been worse because we don't have these tools or better because people didn't travel so much? I'm not sure. What do you yeah, think? I mean, if this happened 20 years ago, would we be going in to teach anyway, or would we have just canceled no. classes? We couldn't have done them. We would have, we would have, I think we would have just canceled classes, actually. Probably would have just canceled classes. I think and we would. Then, but 20 years ago, maybe it would not, would not have spread as fast. People didn't travel as much. Um, yeah, I mean, it was pretty bad in 1918, and travel sure. was <laughs> pretty bad back then. Mm -hmm. um, oh, you had, a, you had a post. You had a very... Uh, prescient post a long time ago called Jet versus Net. Uh, we may soon be making that that choice more, more. I mean, well, that choice may no longer be ours to make. We may we may be entering a net society. Um, yeah, there was, you know, I mean, oddly enough, around the same time, I've been seeing a couple of petitions, and actually one just came out of the TCS community, 
to have more virtual conferences because of you know, carbon di I mean, not even virus related things, carbon yeah. footprint, because um, you do create a huge carbon footprint to all the conferences we have. Um, well, we'll have a test run this summer. So I think yeah. it, uh, it'll be interesting to see if some of these, uh, if, if we can feel comfortable having these virtual conferences, maybe we'll see more of them. I hope we don't get rid of them completely because I do think the network is important. Um, but, uh, you know, I, I suspect, and I wouldn't be upset. I think we have way too many conferences in computer science because yeah. um, that's just the way we publish. Um, so I wouldn't be upset if we had fewer. Um, but I, it still would be good to get the community together. It's just if not. We have, if we go virtual, we may have more conferences because it's just, it's just too easy. Yeah. Okay. Well, actually, a couple of things. So my book club, which is mostly some people there are not that technical. They they love Zoom. My God, we can have a book club over Zoom. Wow. Uh, my Bible study, same thing. Wow, uh, over Zoom. Uh, so the thing is, lay people, people outside of technology, are more impressed and excited about these things uh, than maybe we would be. But there are some things you can still do. Uh, our church is now broadcasting um, every, every Sunday. There's like the minister and a few other people at church, and they do a streaming. So that's good too. Yeah, yeah we did service uh, a couple of weeks ago. Something, yeah, something happened. And in fact, we just went shopping today, and they did have most of what we wanted. You can guess you can guess the thing they didn't have toilet paper, but aside from that, it seems okay. Yeah, we can be holed up. I mean, how I don't know if we'd be holed up. Uh, I mean, anywhere from a few weeks to a year or so from now. I don't know how long it's going to be. Year. But question for you though. So I think me and you are similar in this along these lines. My wife's different. I could stay at home for a month, literally never leave the house, and be okay with that. I will point out I would, I do have a treadmill in the basement that helps too. But I mean, I, I really could. I don't I don't get I don't get cabin fever. How about you? I could stay home uh, by myself. Uh, oh, yeah, I mean, I, I kind of miss you know, talking to people in person. I mean, I have a lot of these meetings. Mm -hmm. um, I'm definitely doing okay. I think, you know, uh, when you're with a family, <laughs> you know, we're not in a big house. We're just in a condo now. Uh -huh. um, it can uh, it can get a little tight, but uh, I think we're we're doing okay. Uh, for better or worse, I have only my wife, and that's that's fine. We have a wife, and uh, actually, the, the, I remember I I asked my uh, my niece. I said, I told her, "Gee, I think that the divorce rate is going to skyrocket with this thing." And she said, "She's married." She said, "I'm so glad I have a." Uh, I was thinking she'd say big house, but no, she said loving husbands. So that was good. But yeah, anyway, so, yeah. So um. Yeah, yeah. The story is we'll have we'll either have or probably both a lot more babies and a lot more divorces in nine months. Or maybe both. Yeah, that's the problem. Um, I'm not sure babies, because do people really want to have kids? I mean, I know what you're talking about, but do people want to have kids in the midst of the pandemic? Well, we'll see. Okay. Uh, also, th there have been some serious things. Oh, I, I am happy to say I, I lucked out in that. Um, you may recall a while back I had, I broke, uh, yeah, I had this, in fact, yeah, this pinky still isn't that good yet. But the point is, though, I was, I had my last hand therapy session just before they actually closed, closed shop for the summer. I closed shop for a while anyway. Oh. Okay, well, you timed your injury well. Uh, well, indeed. Yeah, well, is Illinois a state home state? Oh, uh, yeah, we were one of the early ones. So that's okay, good. Yeah. I think that's good because Chicago's about to be, uh, I think it would have been much worse in Chicago. We have a pretty good governor or mayor here that have been shutting things and closing down the parks and everything like that. So yeah. um, we became stay at home, I think, about two weeks ago. Although, I mean, it was usually it was recommended for a while, and then they had to enforce it because people weren't doing it. There are still about seven states that aren't stay-at-home, and there are some states that give exceptions for churches. And as you know, there are some pastors that have been arrested for encouraging people. I mean, to say that two months ago, people didn't know quite how bad it was going to be, I have sympathy for that. But now, there are some people now who are uh, being reckless about this. And um, there's no excuse for that. There's no excuse for that at this point. Yeah, I still have people out there who are, you see people going outside and mingling around the park. Mm -hmm. um, yeah, no, it's if people stay home, everyone. I, <laughs> well, no, I, mean, I don't have to yeah, say that. Too. You're outside taking a walk, and you make sure to not meet anybody, and make sure you're far away. How that? How that be? I uh, I just be careful because okay. there's a lot of people out there. I've done like last. We did this once a while, maybe a week or two ago, and we had joggers jogging right by us, bicyclists riding right by us. I mean, a lot of people would kind of swerve around when you walk near them. Not everyone. So you can't really avoid, and, and you know, I mean, if one or two people go out, that's probably fine. 
I mean, you're kind of in a suburb, so it's probably not yeah. as crowded. Yeah. But you know, we're in. Uh, uh, right now, I'm living in the South Loop in Chicago, and so there's a lot of people. So yeah. if people decided to go out, even a tiny percentage, it would get very crowded very quickly. Yeah. No, we 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 have managed to take walks occasionally and avoid people pretty well. But you're right, though. Aside, I mean, I'm talking about that's that part's kind of a minor issue. I'm more, I'm more annoyed at people who literally that the preacher says, "Come to our church. It's all a democratic hoax," or "God will save you." Uh, it's really bad. And the governor of Florida sided with the pastor, actually. And certain states, like I said, are making exceptions for churches. So which of the three are essential? Alcohol shops, gun shops, or churches? <laughs> I, I, I leave that to the readers, to the to our viewer, viewer, viewers. Oh, I'm, I'm, wow. We don't have readers. We have viewers this time. Oh, boy. If they've lasted this long. Uh, that's the point. Okay, so let me actually. So why don't I just make a lot, one comment and then you sign us off? So, uh, okay. viewer, we urge you to leave comments on how you're doing, positive, negatives, funny, whatever you want to say. Just let us know what you're doing. And uh, Clyde, uh, not, not Clyde, uh, Lance. Uh, see, I'm going crazy. I think you're Clyde. No, Lance. Gotta get Clyde on the next one, I guess. Okay. Take us out. <laughs> um, yeah, no, I mean, let us know. Uh, did us even? Do you want us to do more vidcasts, or should we just vlog, or should we just keep our mouth shut? You know, let us know. Um, we're just trying this out. We haven't done a vidcast in uh, many years. Mm -hmm. uh, so, so, should I sign us out, Phil? Sign us out. So, even this, I mean, my my usual sign out, uh, but it's even a much more complex world. It's even more important to keep it simple. And by simple, I mean stay home, wash your hands, <laughs> you know, the usual stuff. Okay. okay. All right. Take care, Phil. Bye. Bye. Okay. Okay.